Welcome back to the wood shop. This is part two of the barn beam mantle series. In part one, I removed the existing corbels to get a good look at what my mounting situation is for these new corbels. While I was there, I also took the corbel mock-up that I made with me to get an approval from the customers just on the general shape and the profile and they were okay with that. So the next challenge is going to be making these corbels look more like this weathered old barn beam. I have some old barn wood that I'm going to laminate to this on the sides and the front, but it's still gonna be new cuts. So to get the color right, that's kind of my biggest challenge. I'm a little nervous about getting the color to match so it doesn't look like new wood against old wood. I want the whole project to look like old weathered barn wood. So my next step is to clean up this beam. It's been sitting on a pile, so it's full of dirt and it's got a bunch of rusty nails in it. If it was me, I would probably leave one rusty nail in it just for character, but the porters want all the nails removed and that's what they'll get. So I'm gonna remove the nails here down in the shop and then I'm gonna take it outside and power brush it to clean up, clean off all the dirt. I'm trying something new with the audio today. I don't have my lav mic clipped to my shirt. I have a shotgun mic mounted on the camera that's about two arm lengths away from me. So it's probably a little more echoey in the shop here than most of my videos. The mic is a little further away from me and it's picking up the echo in the shop. So let me know in the comments what you think about the audio on this video, whether to continue that or go back to the lav mic. Let's get to denailing and cleaning up this beam. This is what it looks like in January in Wisconsin. It's actually not a bad day. It's about 28 degrees, no wind, so pretty mild. The last time I was out here cleaning up barn wood, it was May and it was in the 70s and it was absolutely gorgeous. So a little bit different, but this is definitely tolerable. I've just got a stiff plastic brush on this uh, corded drill. I don't want to use cordless because I don't want to run out of power. It's pretty narrow and thin, so this is going to take a while. I forgot something. Last time I used a small clamp to keep the trigger pulled so I don't have to grip it the entire time. So I'm gonna go get that. Two hours later. Now we're going to cut this down to the final length of 64 inches. So I'm just going to get that marked off. And you know what? I think I'm going to go old school on this. I'm going to go man powered. So I'm getting old and flabby and I need some exercise. It'll also give us some good saw marks on the end. This saw has been sitting unused in my garage for years and it's gotten a bit rusty. I'm just adding some paste wax so it'll glide through the wood easier.
Not too shabby. It's almost too smooth. I know. Reciprocating saw blade just to give it a little more texture. I realized this little lighter was going to take way too long, so I went and got a bigger torch. Fire! I'm trying to keep my distance so it doesn't get too black. I just want to add a little color and accentuate the natural patterns in the wood. So now we come to what I think is the trickiest part of this whole project, which is color matching to this beam. Here I have the off cut that I just sawed off and I did that roughing up and burning here. So you can see the difference between the new cut and the color that I added. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but the whole inside of the beam already has some like aged color to it, as opposed to the brand new red oak that I got from the store you can clearly see the difference there. I said in the first video that this was a mock-up, so I realized I don't have to remake a, a whole new one. I can just use this and trim it down and add barn wood to it. So none of this new wood is gonna be showing. And I have a few ideas of how to approach this. One is I've already got a bunch of offcuts from the same farm, same species, red oak, and it's got the aged appearance. These are offcuts from another mantle project that I did, and I've got a bunch of it here. And as you may be able to tell, we've got a instant color match with this. If there's a way where I can get this thin enough that it'll bend, I could potentially bend it around this curve, then I wouldn't have to worry about the color matching because it's built right in. So I gotta do some experimenting with getting it thin and trying to bend it. Another thought that I had was to take sections from this offcut of the beam and cut it down so it has this curve shape. So just kind of maybe like a half inch thick curve and then glue that to the in inside of this curve. Then that will have at least this color and we may be able to do some of this scorching to get the color right. By the way, I didn't like how the shotgun mic sounded, so I went ahead and switched back to the lab mic. So I think that sound will be better. There are other ways to chemically change the color of wood using either vinegar and steel wool, or baking soda and water is another way to artificially age the wood and change the colors. Of course, there's stains and paints and things like that, but I don't think I really want to add pigment to this. Um, I, I just think that will complicate it. I like what scorching with fire did to the end of this. It, it kind of accentuates the texture and gives it depth and of course color, so it doesn't look like a new cut. So there's lots of options for coloring. My favorite idea is just using something that already has the color that I'm going for and get that to laminate to the new corbels. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to make the bend around that curve. So it's time to do some experimenting. I'm gonna trim some of these offcuts down and get it thin so it's bendable. And I'm also gonna do some color testing with fire, with vinegar and steel wool, and with the baking soda. And we'll just try to come up with our best solution. The planer by itself will only take a piece down to about an eighth of an inch thickness. So in order to get thinner than that, 
I used this planer sled made of melamine with a strip of plywood on the end to keep the workpiece from sliding off. As I got thinner, the planer was too aggressive and tore out big chunks on my test piece. My next attempt to get it thin was my brand new cordless hand plane that I got for Christmas. This is my first time using one of these. Obviously, I need some practice. Okay, now I'm going to test two chemical stains, the first being the vinegar and steel wool. I made this on the 18th, today's the 24th, so it's been sitting for six days. You see what happened to it? The steel wool is pretty much dissolved. The longer it sits, I think the more potent it gets, but I don't really know. I'm not a scientist. This is completely experimental. I don't have any controls or anything. Not very scientific. So that's the vinegar and steel wool. And over here, I'm gonna be using just regular baking soda and water. And this is coffee with cream. That's not for coloring, that's for drinking. Okay, so I'm gonna do a tablespoon of baking soda and a half a cup of water. Again, not very scientific. Just stir that up till it's dissolved. And while that's thinking about dissolving, I'm gonna go ahead and paint on the vinegar and steel wool. And I'm kind of expecting it to have an instant change, but this is oak. I haven't seen a lot of people do the oak. Mostly you see it on like pine or I've done it on cedar before, see? It's turning instantly gray. Well, maybe a little too gray. And our baking soda's not quite dissolved yet. That vinegar is getting really dark. I'm not speeding this up. This is happening in real time. That's super dark. <laughs> and I think it's going to continue to get darker and darker. So... I don't know. I don't think that's going to be a solution for me. I think the longer it sits, the more potent it is. So if I were to just put the steel wool in and paint it on like 24 hours later that might not get so dark oh my gosh this is like turning black that's crazy wow not amazing okay I'm curious to see what the baking soda will do should have maybe warmed up my water so it would dissolve better you can use distilled water if you want to be picky this is Somerset well water which is my favorite thing to drink <laughs> Obviously, this is way too dark. I mean, this is what we're trying to match, you know, so that's not going to work. This is why we test on sample wood. All right, I'm just going to try it. Curious to see what it'll do with something that's already aged. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry and we'll come back and see what it looks like. A few moments later. Well, it's not dry yet. It's only been about 10 minutes maybe, but that is passable. This is the aged wood and this is it's aged wood but a, a clean slice of it. Yeah. But look at that. 
color match. I like that. That could work. Meanwhile, the aged part looks like it's going to get quite a bit darker brown. It's so interesting. Okay, I'm going to let it dry completely and we'll see what that looks like. So this is my steam chamber. It's uh, maybe a bit too big <laughs> for what I'm trying to do. And I think this hot pot is a little undersized or something. Looks like it's turning on and off intermittently. Uh, it is putting steam up into the tube, but it wasn't exactly pouring out. And it's been in there for over an hour. But I have to go to work, so I can't wait around any longer for this to get hot enough. Tomorrow. Now it's the next day, and these are dry. The vinegar and steel wool is still completely black. The baking soda and water maybe is a little bit lighter than it was when it was wet, but it's basically the same color. And it's a really good match to the aged barn wood. I like that. At least as a, a base gray color. Might have to add a little bit of brown to it to get it to blend in a little bit better. Maybe with either fire toasting or a little dirt rubbed in. I'm not sure. That's a pretty good match. So I'm very happy about that. Fire! <laughs> Again, not trying to go too dark here. I just want to bring out the brown color. Just the way I like my marshmallows. Golden brown. Not flaming black. steam chamber is working. I had to switch to the deep fryer burner instead of that stupid little hot plate which was like intermittent and would go on and off and didn't really let it come to a full boil. So this is working way better. Urf. <laughs> okay. Come on, seriously? Oh my gosh. PVC expanded. Okay. Mm. This stuff has been in here for about an hour in the steam. Mm. So it feels like it's gonna crack. Yeah, maybe if we go slow. Let's try a thicker piece.
just tough to get the clamps on it. Well, the steam bending kind of worked. It's keeping its shape somewhat, and it sprung back a little bit after I took the clamps off. But if it was glued in place and it was left on there until it was cured, I think it'll make the bend. And I had another idea of if I took the positive and the negative, and then this wasn't steamed, but it's just thin enough, and it'll probably crack as I do this, but if I bring the two pieces together with clamps, then the lamination should make the bend. That's actually working with this thin stock. What I'm trying to do with putting the old wood on the new wood, kind of reminds me of old wineskins and new wineskins. But anyway, um, I'm trying to hide these laminations and glue lines and also hide the new wood. I've got a couple pieces that are about this thickness in the steamer right now. That's a lot thicker than this first sample that I tested. But steam bending, if you do it long enough, you can bend even thicker pieces than this. The big drawback of my steam chamber is that it's only six inches wide at the widest. So this piece was just a little under six, but my corbels are seven and a quarter. So I'm only gonna be able to cover up that much which is okay because I kind of planned on trimming off the outside edges anyway and replacing it with full thickness barn wood so that I'd have barn wood on both sides. So if I choose to do it this way, there'll be a glue line here where the outsides meet the lamination inside. But I think I can work at that to kind of blend it in and it'll be less noticeable than all these lines. Plus it'll already have the aged wood appearance and I won't have to try to do the color matching. So it's definitely worth a shot. Yeah, I'm feeling good about this one. I think this is gonna work.
going in. It's working. Day four. Okay, this is the real deal. Putting glue on is permanent. I've got packing tape on this piece so it doesn't stick to any glue that might squeeze out the show side. Got to work kind of fast here. I've done a couple practice runs, so feeling pretty good about this. I know the thickness works. I know the steam works. Just uh, pray that I don't mess up somehow. In Jesus' name. Oh, seriously. <laughs> this, uh, why is that a problem? Come on! There we go. Hoofda.
Okay. Big time. Okay, maybe my confidence was misplaced. Well, I'm going to take this down in the shop and see what else we can throw at it. Tomorrow. Well, that didn't go nearly as smooth as I was hoping. This first attempt got really cracked up and did not want to make the bend. Not really sure why. Maybe it wasn't thin enough. Maybe it was just the way the grain is lined up. But anyway, that piece became useless. So this was attempt number two. It still had some gaps behind, but it did make the bend. I ended up putting some thick CA glue in the gaps. And now we're going to turn our attention to the sides. I've got some full thickness boards here that I'm going to cut down to size and plane on the back so they're flat so I can glue them up to here. Barnwood is always going to be a little twisty and uneven. So the first thing I tried to do on the bandsaw was to establish a flat-ish back surface so it would be nice and flat for gluing. But on the show face where all the character is, there's going to be some twists and bow and cups and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to use some hot glue on this planer sled to keep them from rocking while they're going through the planer. This is the front face of the corbel that I'm resawing to reduce the thickness. This is a safer way to resaw on the table saw, raising the blade to less than half the height and leaving it attached in the middle, and then hand sawing to finish the cut. Then there's just a little cleanup on the back side. Somehow this second corbel ended up a half inch too deep. I must have forgotten to subtract the thickness of the face before cutting. Better too long than too short. Okay, now I've got this face piece cut down to size. It's the right thickness. It is a full board's width, so it's got the aged coloring and the texture and everything on both corners. So that'll cover the whole face. So we're looking at the bottom of the beam here where the corporal will be mounted. And then we got the half inch, half inch setback. And then this would be the stone wall. And I've got it cut flush here. So the next step is getting this, these sides trimmed down to fit these side pieces. And I've got these flattened on the back. 
So the next trick is to figure out where to trim these edges so that when these sides are on, then this will cover up everything on the face. This is the tricky part of working with barn wood because uh, you can probably see here there's a taper toward the front and it's kind of bowed out. These outsides are not flat. They're, they want to rock and stuff on, on here. They're not square either. So I gotta get it aligned as best as I can. Obviously I don't want to cut it too short on the first cut so I may have to try to kind of sneak up on it. No, I think I've got it where I want it and I'll make a mark here and this is not going to be my cut line but it will help me measure. I'm going to have to divide this distance in two and then split the difference from edge to edge of this. hope that makes sense. So here's the line I made. We've got one and 25, 30 seconds. I'm going to fudge in a little bit to 1 and 24. One to make the math easier, but two, I just don't want to, I don't want to end up short on this piece. I need this piece to hide everything behind it. Definitely don't want to end up short on this. So half of 1 and 24 is 16 and 12 is 28. So 28, 30 seconds. Those dashes are small. Okay. I think I can feel it because I can barely see it. Now I've got it clamped up so this outside is nice and flush. And whenever I can, I like to use a relative measurement rather than measuring with a tape or a ruler. I just feel that with my finger on the outside and then I can make an accurate mark right where I need to cut. It's a little tricky to do without getting my hand in the way of the camera and still being able to see what I'm doing accurately. I'm putting my knife right back in that mark that I made and squaring it up with something solid and see we would have come up short with that pencil line and I even cut on the outside of this pencil line. So relative measurements is where it's at. Let's score this all the way down. And you can see that it didn't quite make it all the way through even with the blade raised all the way up. So I'm just gonna trim that off. And that leaves us with this little triangle here. Save your off cuts in case you need to fill a gap. I needed to clamp it up so it wouldn't slide around. I'm going to take the chisel to that. Well, let's see how we did. That looks really good. Toit like a toiger. Yes, you are toit like a toiger. 
The next step is to trim these back. We don't need all this sticking off the back end. I do want to leave a little bit extra because I'm going to scribe it into the stone. And then we'll cut out this curve. I'm staying outside the line here and after glue up I'll come back and trim it flush with a flush trim bit on the router. Well here's a sneak peek of what it'll look like once it's installed. I hope you can tell that these corbels are not the finished product. There's still quite a lot to do with shaping and coloring and texturing, but that's going to be a whole video all by itself. This video has already gotten pretty long and so if you've stuck around this long, I really do appreciate that. That's probably the best thing that you can do to support my growing channel is watch my videos all the way through. And if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. So now I'm going to get busy making the next video, making these corbels have that antique appearance all the way around. So when I finish that video, I'll put a link to it right here. Meanwhile, here's another video you might like to watch next. Until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other. Mm -hmm.